Hello there, welcome to today's chemistry video. In this video, I will talk about the concept of purity, separation methods such as fractional distillation and paper chromatography. These are one of the basics of the experiments, so let's dive in and learn about them. Just a note that it is in accordance with Cambridge IGCSE chemistry syllabus, but it can be used as the foundation of general chemistry. Before we start, let's learn some terms widely used in chemistry experiments. Firstly, a mixture. A mixture contains two or more substances that are not chemically combined. We have air as an example. Air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and small amounts of other gases such as carbon dioxide. You can think of it as different substances coexisting with one another. Then we have solute, solvent, and solution. Solute is the solid substance that you add in, such as sugar, and solvent is the medium where the solute is dissolved in, like water. When we mix the solute and the solvent, we get a solution and this solution cannot be filtered to separate the substance. It becomes a one substance. Let's say we add a whole lot of solute inside the solvent. At one point, you'll notice that the solute has stopped dissolving inside the solvent. We then call that solution saturated. However, when we put heat to the solution, the solute will start dissolving again. This is because a soluble solute usually gets more soluble as the temperature rises. We call solutions like sugar water as an aqueous solution because its solvent is water. Next up, we have the purity of a substance. We can say a substance is pure if it has only one substance in it. Water can be set 100% pure if it only contains water particles. However, that is not the case as even drinking water contains some minerals. Some substances may contain impurities which are the unwanted substances. There should be careful measures not to include harmful impurities in materials like medical drugs, vaccines, food flavorings, foods consumed by babies, and etc. So how do we check if a substance is pure? It's simple. Check its melting and boiling points. One thing you have to remember is that if a substance is not pure, its melting and boiling points will differ. As for water, its melting and boiling points will not be 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. Also, they will start melting and boiling over a range of temperatures and not sharp at its melting and boiling points. Now, can we obtain pure substances by simple chemistry experiments? Absolutely. Six separation methods are introduced here. I will explain the processes of filtration, crystallization, evaporation, simple distillation, fractional distillation, and paper chromatography, and we can choose them according to which matter we would like to obtain from the substance. The simplest of all filtration. If we have an insoluble substance in a solution, for example, a chalk water, we can easily separate them by passing it through a filter paper on the filter funnel placed above a flask. The filter paper will prevent the chalk from penetrating it through, but water will be able to drip through the funnel and collect in the flask. The chalk is called a residue and water as the filtrate. Next, we have crystallization. This solution will contain a soluble substance such as copper to sulfate. Heat this solution until its water volume is reduced and is saturated. Leave the solution to cool down and you'll see crystals forming at the bottom of the beaker. Obtain these crystals by using filtration method which is learned and rinse them with distilled water and dry them. Not all substances can be separated by crystallization as they are soluble even in low temperatures, like salt dissolved in water. So we have to use the method of evaporation. It's another simple process where we keep hitting the solution until almost all the water evaporates off. You'll see that the salt appears after some time and just continue to hit it until all of them dries off. What if we have two solids mixed together, for example, a mixture of sand and salt? We can first add the mixture in water and filter it as salt will dissolve in it, but sand will not dissolve in it. You can obtain sand as it will be the residue and the salt solution will be the filtrate. 
After that, just evaporate the water from the filtrate to obtain salt. For the mixture of salt and sugar, use ethanol as the solvent as salt dissolves in it, but sugar does not. Simple distillation. This method is used to obtain solvents from a solution, for example, water from salt water. First, put salt water in the flask and heat the solution so that it evaporates the water. When water vapor is formed, it will travel to the condenser and turn to water as the condenser is kept cold. Then the water will drip into the beaker as distilled water without salt. Last separation method, fractional distillation, is quite similar to simple distillation, except that it is used to separate a mixture of liquids instead of a solvent from a solution. There is a special condition to it, which is the liquids mixed together should be of different boiling points. Ethanol and water mixture is the most common example for fractional distillation, as ethanol's boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius, while for water it is 100 degrees Celsius. So the process goes like this. Heat the flask containing ethanol and water until the thermometer reading reaches 78 degrees Celsius. The ethanol vapor will travel through the glass beads and to the condenser, and just like simple distillation, it will collect in the beaker placed below the condenser. During this process, some water may evaporate as well, but this will condense on glass beads, which are 78 degrees Celsius, and drip back to the ethanol and water mixture. You can stop heating the flask when the thermometer reading rises above 78 degrees Celsius, as it means all ethanol has been changed to ethanol vapor and have been collected in the beaker as liquid. We have come to the last part of the lesson, paper chromatography. Paper chromatography can be in many forms and the one shown here is to separate a mixture of substances, for example, a dye. For you to do that, place a drop of black ink in the center of filter paper and drip water on it. You will start seeing that the ink has spread out and separated into rings of different colors such as blue, red, and yellow. This chromatogram will then reveal what kind of dyes were present in the ink. We have another form of chromatography here where it is used to identify the substances present in a mixture. When mixture X is thought to contain substances A, B, C, and D, all soluble in propanon, we place a spot of each along a line of chromatography paper. Note that this line should be a pencil line so that it doesn't spread in propanon. The next step, we roll and place the paper in a glass tank containing a little propanon. The solvent will rise up the paper, causing the spots to spread and travel upwards. After the solvent has reached the top, remove the paper and analyze it. From the diagram here, we can see that X has separated into three spots, and two of them are of same height as A and B, indicating that it contains A and B, but not C and D. So how does this chromatography work? Initially, two substances are mixed together and dissolved in a solvent. These two substances will then travel at different speeds according to their own solubilities in water and attraction to the paper. As a result, we'll see them separated after a period of time. We can also find out that the more soluble a substance is in the solvent, the further it will travel across the chromatography paper. The uses of paper chromatography are various and are the following. To separate mixtures of substances, to purify a substance by separation, to identify colored substances, and also to identify colorless substances. How is it possible that we can identify colorless substances? We'll find it out now. We have five test tubes here, all containing colorless solutions of amino acids dissolved in water. Test tube A contains a mixture of amino acids and we are to find out its content. Test tube B to E contain one amino acid each. Firstly, put a spot along a line drawn in pencil and label each spot at the very top of the filter paper. Place a solvent in the bottom of a beaker. In this case, we use a mixture of water, ethanoic acid, and butanol and roll and place the chromatography paper inside the beaker and cover the top. After some time, when the solvent has reached the top of the paper, 
Remove the paper and mark its position with a pencil line. Put the paper in an oven to speed up its drying. Now is the time for magic. Spray a locating agent on anhydrine onto the chromatography paper. This will make the amino acids to show up. Do it in a film covered as anhydrine is harmful when inhaled or absorbed through skin. When amino acids become completely visible, heat the paper in an oven for around 10 minutes. You'll see that the spots have turned purple. Then, at the center of each spot, mark a pencil dot and measure from the baseline to each dot and to the line showing the final solvent level. With the measurements we have done, we can calculate the RF value of each amino acid. RF value is calculated by dividing the distance moved by amino acid with the distance moved by solvent. After calculating it, we can look up the RF tables to identify the amino acids as the RF value of a compound is always the same for a given solvent under same conditions. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. For our next video, I will discuss about atoms, the electronic structures, isotopes, and so on. Please subscribe and like if you want to see more videos like this. Also, feel free to comment down below if you have any doubts or remarks. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Thank you and see you in my next video. Bye.